Hi everyone and welcome to my channel. This is Elise here of Plan With Elise and today we are doing sort of a double video. So lately on my channel I've done one video where I calculate my monthly budget and one video where I set up my budget planner just due to the nature of there being a lot of content this time of year. I don't necessarily have the space on my channel to do separate videos for this topic. So we're going to do them all in one today and we'll see how long it takes. So I'm going to try, <coughs> excuse me, to push through the budgeting breakdown portion quickly which means I have to stop talking about it. Um, I have here my monthly budget worksheet that I have created for my patrons. Um, and so I'm going to be using that to break down my budget for the month. I do what's called a zero-based budget system, which means that I take my total income for the month. So this is a combination of my full-time job and part of what I pay myself for the month from Plan With Elise. And I'm going to total that. And then we are going to list things out here until we get to zero so that every dollar of my check is accounted for. So I feel like I probably could have filled some of this out in advance, but we are just going to write them out over here. And sometimes I feel like I repeat myself in these videos, but part of that is because maybe it's your first time watching. So one of the repetition things I always talk about is the price of my rent. I live in a two bedroom apartment in New Jersey, um, Northern New Jersey. So I'm close to Manhattan. Uh, PSENG is New Jersey's electric. So um, I don't think, and that's usually an estimate for me, it's not going to be that high just to give you an idea because I only pay for electricity. I don't pay for heat or anything. In October, I think it was $29. So it's pretty low and I'm grateful for that. But I usually bump a pad onto it for a couple of reasons. Number one, let me just also note, um, my renter's insurance is going to be due. That's due annually. Number one, in case my electric bill is higher, I want to be prepared for that. And number two, this will help me in the summer because when my electric bill is higher because I use air conditioning, then I will have some of that money kind of padded and ready to go so I don't have to spend a lot of extra money in my budget for my electric in the summer. Okay, my expenses. So those are my bills. We need to total those up. 2515 plus 336 plus 336 plus 122 plus 40 plus 15 plus 15 plus 78 we have 3457. There's a possibility that this is going to change. Um, there's two things. Number one, my health insurance is going to change no matter what. It's going to change because I don't, it's a new, this bill will be for the January 1st bill, which is actually going to be for next year. So it's a new healthcare plan. Um, However, I haven't settled on a plan yet, and there's also a possibility that I'll end up being covered through my job as something new that might be offered, but I don't know what's going to happen with either of those things yet. So in the meantime, I'm going to do the number I've been doing, and if I owe less, awesome. If I owe more, then I'll pay myself a little bit more from Plan With a Lease because I pay myself a portion of what I earn and put the rest in savings or taxes or you know, maybe to help make up for a month where the earnings aren't as much as they were another month. So that's kind of an estimate, but it's where we're going to be. Okay. Expenses. So I give myself $50 a week in spending. This can be any type of spending, whether it's running to CVS or um, picking up food, like a going, picking up takeout, I'm trying to think of what a good example is because lately I haven't really been doing it. Like this video is being filmed on a Thursday and I actually haven't gone to the bank in two weeks to get, excuse me, to get money. Um, it's not the norm for me. Last week I was in Florida. This week I just haven't gone to the bank. I'll probably go tomorrow maybe, but what that also means is I'm not really spending money in person. I've spent money online on like planner things and um, other stuff. So for miscellaneous, I give myself 150 a month. So an example of miscellaneous is usually my Amazon purchases. So today, for example, I ordered a pad to go on my floor, kind of like a kitchen mat. I guess it's a mat, not a pad. 
um, more of like an anti-fatigue mat because I have a standing desk and I don't often use it, but I've been having a lot of physical pain lately. And I think part of that is posture and the fact that I sit all day. But one of the challenges for me with using the standing desk is that my feet get fatigued. So anyway, all right, let's talk through some of these numbers because I'm just like writing them down without talking about them with you. And I feel like that's not helpful. You don't need to see me just write. So miscellaneous is for the month. Gas, 50 is for the month. That varies, of course. I do have some money padded in my gas fund because as my nephew's sports wind down with the new season, um, as gas prices change, things like that, as I was away for a few days, I wasn't driving. And like I said, I don't often go out during the week and usually the places that I go are pretty local. So most of my gas is used when I drive over to my brother's house, which is about a half hour away, or my friend's houses, but that doesn't even happen every week. So I don't go through a lot of gas because I work from home. Manicure, I'm giving myself $75. It's been working for me. Um, I haven't added to my aunt sinking fund in a while. That should really go over to sinking funds. Okay, we're gonna breathe for a second, slow down, because I'm putting this in the wrong place. Technically, manicure, I would also consider to be a sinking fund because it's sort of a rolling basis, but we're going to just go back. Um, so I have an ant sinking fund, which is just when I spend time with my niece and nephew and money is spent. Um, I don't budget for that monthly. I kind of have it as an ongoing account or an envelope. And given that December is here and I probably have a few days off work in this time, obviously the kids have off school. I would love to spend time with them. And not that I need to spend money every time, but sometimes it involves spending. So I want to have that money ready for me. And then also every week this year, I have contributed $100 to my savings, just my generic emergency fund savings, probably going to bump that number up a little bit more next year. So that's going to be $400. And then another savings is going to be my retirement. I only have $250 left this year until I reach my $6,000 maximum contribution. And then we are going to go back over to sinking funds for a second. I just like remembered these two and I wanted to throw them in. So the other sinking funds I'm going to contribute to are medical, fun, and dating. Medical is typically my um, co-pays and things like that, but I've been getting Botox for migraines and I'm going to have a big payment one of these days. It's about $450, so I'm adding to it. Also, with this neck pain I've been having, I need some chiropractic appointments. Those are $110, so it's important for me to make sure that I'm always adding to my medical sinking fund. Before we decide the numbers for these, fun is something that I usually try to put $100 a month in. That's when maybe I go out to dinner with a friend or something like that. Hasn't been happening as much lately. My two closest friends, one has a baby and one is having a baby, <laughs> like this week. So it's not happening a lot, but what's nice is that that money is there for when the time comes up. So, and then dating is going to be a portion. I'm going to add these up as I talk about dating. Um, I had mentioned in my November goal setting video that I wasn't putting dating as a goal because I had met someone and that didn't continue pretty much beyond the day that I said it in the video. So I have since added it back into my goals, um, but that also comes with expenses for two reasons. First reason is I find better success on dating apps when I pay for them um, because there's certain perks that come with paying for them, like I can change my location. One of the challenging things about where I live is that I'm about 10 miles from New York City and I don't necessarily wanna date in New York City. So if I expand my radius past 10 miles, you don't get to go in a certain direction. So if I go 10 miles east, east, <laughs> I'm hitting New York City, but maybe I just wanna go 10 miles north, like where my brother and my friends live. So when I can pay for an app, 
I can set my location to those places so I don't have to deal with the radius issue. The other part of it is dating comes with expenses. When you go out, I'm always going to offer to contribute to the bill and that costs money. So I want some money in there for that. Okay, I haven't done my sinking funds yet because we're gonna calculate this together. So 52.94 minus 34.57 minus 675 minus 650 brings me to $512. I want to make sure that that math is right before I proceed with figuring everything else out. So I'm just going to write estimate 512. And then I'm just going to turn the camera off and double check all of my math. Okay, now the math was right, but the bills were wrong because I double checked against my bills last month. Always important to double check. And I forgot about my Kindle Unlimited. And that is $12, of course. Oh, I had it down here. 57 plus 12 is 34, 69. I could use a pencil. It probably wouldn't show up as well on camera. So we now have 500 left. And that's where I'm going to decide what to do here. So for me, it makes sense to put 200 in my medical sinking fund. We'll put 100 into fund, which is my comfort number. And we'll put 100 into dating. What I'm currently paying for costs $39.99 a month. And then that gives me another $60 for outings and things like that. And if I don't happen to go on any, because I know it's a weird time of year to date, then that can be rolled over into January. So the next thing that I'm going to do, and I'm just trying to decide right now if I want to do this on camera or not, is basically break this down by paycheck. So I get paid on Mondays. So what I need to now do is take each of my paychecks and figure out how to break this all down so that it adds up to the paycheck number. I think that what we're going to do, just because this is sort of a double video, <clears throat> is do a little bit of it, but not all of it. And I want to direct you back to my November budget breakdown video if you're interested in how I do every single detail, because again, I want to make the most of what we're doing here today. And this piece can take like another 20 to 30 minutes for me. So what I'm going to do is write out my bills and also write out how many weeks I have to put aside money because what I do, we're gonna write um, equals 620, let's round this up, 629 times four. What I do is every week when I get paid, the money gets transferred over until I have four payments of 629 in my account and then I'll pay with that once it's due. So then I'll take the same thing now I'm looking at my calendar here because Honda is 336. Honda is going to be due at the end of the month. So I also have four weeks to pay that. Not pay that, but kind of save for it. And this is just how it works best for me. It may not work for everyone, but this is what I started doing when I started budgeting. And it, it works and I almost don't know how else I would do it at this point because that's what works for my brain. Um, you know, someone had recently mentioned this is a lot of repetition and writing that's unnecessary. And I, I understand that for some, it may be unnecessary. You know, for some people, they just get paid and they spend their money throughout the month and they pay their bills and they reach their savings goals. And it's not a challenge. For me, it's not that easy. And so I know for others, they don't do that and it becomes a challenging thing. This is what works for me and my purpose with everything on my channel is to share what I'm doing and hope that a piece of it you can apply into your life. So we're just gonna write out the remaining bills. And I'm not breaking these down because I usually don't need to because they're smaller numbers. Winter insurance, 78. This might get broken down, we'll say. Kindle, 12. Okay, now I'm gonna continue writing these, but off camera to save time. All right, now we are ready. So when I'm looking at the December paydays, we have December 5th, 
December 12th, and then we'll get to the others once I know how long <laughs> this needs to be. So when I divide my income by four weeks, it's going to be 13.2350. So I'm going to write that here. So I know that each week that's what we need to add up to, and I'm going to grab a highlighter as well. And now we're going to move these over. So we have rent, 629, Honda, 84, AmeriHealth is my health insurance, 84, FICO, 61, spending, 50, groceries, 50, savings, 100. And now we'll know that we are a quarter finished with these, half finished with these, a quarter, a quarter, and a quarter. Okay, now we'll take the 1323.5 and subtract these to see what's left to work with for the week. We have 265.50. Let's do that one more time. again 265.50 so I do like to put gas oh I, I met I wrote 150 there for gas that's a good catch I like to put gas at the beginning of the month so now we're gonna go can you see this we're gonna go down 50 and gas is finished I also like to put my miscellaneous at the beginning of the month minus 150 and now we are left with 65.50. Um, so it's up to me to figure out what I want to do with that money. So I wouldn't mind having the electric bill covered. Oops, immediately. 40. And we are left with 25.50. Let's get some of these bills out of the way. So we'll do Zoom. 15. And we are left with 1050. So I'm going to do that with my Kindle because it's just a small, it's the smallest bill. And we'll write 10.5. And here I'm going to write 10.5, knowing I owe $1.50 more to that. And again, that's really the breakdown of a budget to zero method because every dollar and 50 cents <laughs> is accounted for. So we're going to do the same thing here. And this should end up being the same number that I then get to figure out what to do with. 61, spend. And you'll see that I'm not putting my many of my sinking funds in right away because the goal is to get the bills paid and take care of big savings goals before I spend. 100. Okay, now I don't remember what that number was, so we're going to do it again. 629 minus 84 minus 84 minus 61 minus 50 minus 50 minus 100 to 65.50. Okay, so let's mark these off so we know that they are taken care of. Okay, and now we are going to do um, manicure. 75. Oops. And we have 190.50 left. So let's get that Kindle just taken care of so it's not just randomly there. And we're gonna do minus 1.5. And now Kindle is completely covered and we have 189 left. So because we are now getting to mid month, I'd like to put fun in here and dating will be 89 because we don't have another hundred dollars in this paycheck. So this is going to be 89 and we're going to put fun is now taken care of. We're going to do the same thing. The next paycheck will be December 19th. 
And then some of these, Geico is now covered. So I don't have to worry about that anymore. So the number is going to change. Rent is $6.29. Honda. This is for my car lease. AmeriHealth is $84. So we're skipping Geico. We're going to spend $50. Groceries, $50. Savings, $100. And the more you do this, the quicker it becomes because my budget is pretty similar every month, but there are of course some things that change like the sinking funds, like renter's insurance, like an Amazon Prime renewal, stuff like that. Minus 629, minus 84, minus 84, minus 50, minus 50, minus 100. We are at 326.50. So let's get the additional $11 from dating. 11. So now dating is handled. Now I actually have to do it. <laughs> 315.50. Um, let's get the remaining bills out of the way. 15. And renter's insurance. 78. I know I said I wasn't going to do this whole thing, but I never found a good spot to stop the video while still sharing with you what I'm doing. So Forget about that piece. Okay, now we have two twenty two fifty in here. Again, getting to the end of the month. Let's make sure that my aunt fund is funded. And we have one twenty two fifty left. So that's gonna all be for medical. So I'm just gonna note that here. Okay. Final stretch, December 26th. And this will be the final piece for all of us. And then we will get to the actual decorating part, which is a little bit more fun. Although I enjoy this part because it's kind of like a puzzle to figure out. <laughs> but I think the decorating is what many of you come for. Although in November, my breakdown video had more views than my decorating video. Let me know what you're here for, or if you're just here to hang out. I'm here to hang out too. <laughs> 100. Okay, so now we are finished with these bills and we have two things left. So theoretically, this should be all that's left when I do this math. 13, 13, 23.5 minus 629 minus 84 minus 84. Minus 50, minus 50, minus 100. We have 326.50. So Roth, again, that's my retirement, is 250. Minus 250. And 76.50 is medical. What's 76.50 plus 122.5? 199. And I know that we have a dollar off because I rounded. So medical is 76.50. And we are finished with my December 2022 budget. Let's get to decorating to have some fun. All right, so I have some pages from my Happy Planner Budget Planner here. I have the December currently, then I have the monthly overview and then the first few pages of this, and that's what we are going to use now. But let's start with the monthly overview for the bills. Um, but let's make it pretty. <laughs> so I have the Live Love Posh Holly Jolly sticker book here, gigantic 60 page sticker book. And um, it's a lot of fun, and I think that these colors are fun, whoops. I popped one out. These colors are fun to work with. I know I don't celebrate Christmas, but I've said multiple times that I'm happy to sh use it in my spread. It makes me, like these make me smile. So now I just have to decide which of the stickers I'm gonna use. That's the tough part. That's the part that's gonna take the most time in this video. Oh my goodness. Ah! 
This is the struggle. Okay. We're gonna we're gonna make a decision. Maybe we just go simple with the poinsettias. I feel like that's always a good choice. And it's very bright. And we're just gonna I'm just gonna start there. So while I need certain elements of this page to be functional, I don't need them all to be functional. So I'm happy to kind of play around and um, enjoy the use of some stickers. I'm not going to have anything to write down on Sunday, so I'm gonna let this sticker go over a little bit. I think we may even cover up the December portion there a little bit. Sunday's not typically a day where I have budgeting needs or bills due or things like that. Um, let's see, okay. Oh, I could have done a smaller one over there, but that's all right. Now let's take this sticker. Saturday is also not really a day where I have a budgeting need. Okay. I think that we're gonna put these, put the functional stickers down and then get back to decorating. Kind of how I say like spend what's left after saving. Decorate what's left after functional. That's how that works best for me. All right, now I'm going to take my bill due stickers from Planner Kate and we're going to put down my bills. So I have rent to internet. I didn't put internet in my monthly budget. <sighs> okay, it's not a big deal that I didn't put internet in my monthly budget. And I'm gonna do that after this video, but here's why it's not a big deal for me because my internet, I pay through my business account, so I don't necessarily need to budget for it. I can't believe I missed that. That's my internet and my phone bill. No, I don't have a phone bill. Well, it is my phone. Okay, sorry. It's my internet and phone plan. My phone is paid off, but I'm like, I kind of can't believe that, that I missed that. Okay, what's in my hand? Electric. Um... So again, I don't need to budget for it because it comes out of my account. I do usually put it in here, but this time I missed it. So I apologize for that. Take car insurance, car payment. And then again, these are from Planner Kate. And you can always save using code PKLOVE20 on her website. That's just her like default discount code. It's not an affiliate code or anything but I know that there are affiliates. Okay, let's talk credit card payments for a second because I didn't talk about credit card bills on the monthly budget and there is a reason for that. So I mentioned that recently I didn't go food shopping. Um, when I went to the grocery store, I used my credit card and then what I did is took the money in my bank account and transferred it to my credit card um, payment account so that when that's due, that money is already there. So I don't need to budget to pay for my credit card because anytime I do credit card spending, it will end up being um, handled in my spreadsheet. Okay, now I need some bill due stickers. So I'm looking back here through my planner. Kate, I think we're gonna use game last time and we're gonna use those again. Bill due because I do have some other bills besides the credit cards. So let's take game. And then this one is going to be for my renter's insurance. Then we have my Kindle. That's, yeah, the 22nd. Zoom is on the first of the month. And Netflix is on the 28th. And then I'll write those bills being due. So this piece, function wise, bills due. We're good. All right, next up we are going to do savings. It looks like I'm going to need more of these stickers soon. 
little rip here. Mondays when are when I add to my savings. So this is a good tracking system for me. I'm struggling with these stickers. I've never had that before. I may just need to there we go. Okay, that works. And again, I do it Mondays because Monday is my payday. And then we are going to do a little bit of color coding. So I have the Mojo Jojo Plans Check It Off sticker book. Um, this sticker book, I don't know if it's still available, but uh, you can now save on all Mojo Jojo Plans stickers using code Elise10. I'm now an affiliate. So really excited to be able to because I use her stickers all the time. So I'm going to color code these. And we are going to write um, YST and PWI. YST are the initials of the company that I work for. So this is where I'm going to track my income. And then PWI is plan with a lease. And that's where I'll track that income. So next to these red dots each week, I'll write down my paycheck amount. And then on the green dots that I'm about to put down is where I will track plan with a lease income and the source. So for example, on the second of the month, I will get paid for um, Patreon. On the first of the month is usually when my Kell of a Plan affiliate will come in. The 23rd is Happy Planner affiliate. I'm sorry, the 23rd is YouTube. 21st is Happy Planner affiliate. And then Tuesdays are when I get paid from my Etsy shop. So it's a lot of tracking and my planner helps me do it all. I know that there were some requests on my last video to maybe show how I use this using fake numbers. That may be something that'll come next year. Um, it's just not something that I, I'm comfortable sharing in terms of that element, right? Because there, there's a lot of my budget that I do share with you. There are pieces that I need to keep private for my job and just for, you know, for a lot of reasons. So I do want to let you know, though, if you use my affiliate links, I really appreciate it because it does help me in a lot of different areas of my life. So this is our monthly page and I think we're good. Um, I'm now also realizing that I, I took out the Mojo Jojo Plans monthly boxes and planned on using them here, but sort of forgot that it was next to me. But that's okay because there's going to be plenty more monthly spreads to use with this. <laughs> but here's a little flip through. These All these boxes fit perfectly in the monthly. When you peel this off, you will actually get a bullet sticker in addition because this comes off too. So that would have been great for some of these bullets, like just to match with it. But um, I didn't I didn't remember to use it, even though it was right next to me. So, all right, now let's continue. I'm like, I have so many stickers over here. Okay, so again, the monthly is done. This is not a page I use because I already did my breakdown. So we can move this aside and we are still going to do the currently one, but I want to go over here for a minute. So for my savings tracker, let me just take a look at what I did last month and make sure that I want to do the same setup. We're going to keep the same setup for the savings tracker, but we're going to do something different for accounts and debts because besides my car, which is a leased car, like at least talking about a lease, this piece is... Um, isn't irrelevant to me because I don't carry a balance on my credit card. So I'm going back to these stickers over here. The budget planner is not necessarily the easiest planner <laughs> to decorate with, but I try to have a little bit of fun with it when I can. So we can even just take some of these smaller poinsettia stickers and let's kind of just put that right there. Maybe that's enough because I don't want to just throw them down right for no like and not use them for no like on a page that I'm not going to utilize daily. So this is where we're going to write plan 
with Elise. And the reason I'm tracking this here and on the monthly is because on the monthly, that's when I get paid. So with affiliate income especially, the payments don't come through right after they happen. So um, for example, the Happy Planners fall release, which happened in September, that doesn't get paid out until November. So this is where I'll track money that I made and then what had like the source. So let's say the source would be Etsy. Whoops, I totally forgot that you need to give those a minute to dry, that's okay. Then we'll have the amount here. And then once it's paid, I can mark it here. So once I'm paid, in November for September earnings, I can go back to my September budget planner and mark those down. And that's also where I do a weekly budget review to make sure that I actually have been paid for things that were like, if a company wants to send me product and I it's a paid sponsorship, I can mark down here when it's paid. So that just makes it a lot easier for me and more manageable to make sure that everything is being taken care of. Um, and it's not just like my direct deposit that comes through from my job. All right, now sometimes the reality of filming videos, especially um, with a full-time job, is that I run out of time. So the, you know, on weekdays, my filming schedule tends to be before work or on my lunch break and typically after work, but now that daylight savings has ended, daylight saving, right, has ended, I don't, um, I lose that after work time. So the first part of this video, let me get this down while I chat about this, was filmed on my lunch break, but because it ended up being a longer video, I realized that I just had to stop and come back the next day. So we are now in the next morning, it's about 7 a.m. I'm gonna put this sticker down here. I don't need a ton of this space, but we're going to kind of make it work. And then we're gonna take my We Are Memory Keepers punch, just to get these couple of holes punched. Just find this easier than using the Happy Planner punch. Okay. All right, pretty. And then let's grab something here. I'm looking for, I wonder if this would fit. I don't think that'll fit perfectly, but I think maybe we can make it work. So let's get this corner piece. Oops. And because I'm gonna cut part of it, I'm just gonna kind of touch my hand here for a minute so I can remove some of the sticky so it'll be a little bit easier to cut once I'm ready without ripping the page off. This is like a very stick sticky sticker. And then let's kind of put this right here. And we're going to use my slice cutter. To trim that line. And lift this up. I did get another cutter when I was away at the um, planner conference earlier this month, but I haven't um, unpacked it yet. I have unpacked, but I have all my swag still in a box just because I haven't had a chance to go through it yet and I wanna like dedicate that time to it. Okay, now I like that, that looks cute. Now I'm taking Rainbow Quotes by Kel of a Plan and I'm gonna grab this. She believed she could, so she did. It's a good budgeting quote. Perfect. And now let's go back to the Holly Jolly book and I wanna look for box stickers. There we go. This is just what I was looking for. So I'm going to take, I think, this green and this red. And then this is where I feel like I don't really need the financial goals part, but we'll deal with that in a second. So eh, I guess we should cover it up now, right? Not be lazy but I got some on this S here. Just kind of scratch that off. Okay. 
Now I'm gonna put these two boxes here to track my total income for the month. So one box will be for Plan with Elise, one box will be for my regular job. And then down here, I am going to use a couple more boxes just for any, this is important dates, but I'm also gonna put this down here for any important dates um, financially. So for example, the next neurologist appointment I have, that will be a date that is going to cost some money. So that'll be an important date. So any kind of important date that's gonna come up financially. Now for this middle section, I am going to put goals right up here and we're going to set some money organizing goals. So I'm going to grab two of these red boxes. I'm going to put one here and one here. And then these are going to be for weekly tracking. So my first goal is going to be to go to the bank every week um, to get cash out. I just haven't been, been keeping up with it. And part of it has just been, you know, being busy. But I really would like to do that every week. So I'm going to use four bullets down here as a weekly habit tracker could also use a checklist sticker for this and just cut off if there are five. It just, of course, depends on how many paydays you have for the month. And then the next one is going to be... Mm, now I'm wondering how to do this. The goal was going to be one week of no spend besides essentials. I think that I'm going to still do four down here so that I can um, check off which week I do it. I don't know that that's the best way, but it's the only way I'm thinking of right now. So I think that that's how we're going to do this. It kind of just occurred to me as I was putting these down that <laughs> unless I can think of another another goal to do. Okay, now that I have those, I'm going to bring this one in, unless we do the red one. Now I think that we'll do this, but I need another supply. Okay, I grabbed this stencil. It's hard to see. Why oh, can't I see this? I hope you can see it. What is going on here? Like, I really can't see it. There you go, it's a little bit better <laughs> from the Happy Planner Fall release. Um, this is part of their new stencil pack and I love it. And I'm going to bring this in here because I wanna give myself some budget journaling space. When was the last time that you reflected on your finances in a journaling way? And since we're at the end of the year at this point with this page, I feel like this is a good thing to do, whoops, is just kind of spend a little bit of time reflecting. So that's what I want to use for that piece. And then, that's the wrong one. Let's go back to the stickers I was using. But we still have a little bit of space up here. This I'm going to keep as unexpected spends. Um, I don't know, do I just take another one of these poinsettias? I could have brought the trees down here and, and the poinsettias up here, but we're gonna save this tree for another day, another spread, but maybe we'll grab this floral. Put this right over here. This is pretty getting me ready for the season. And this year I'm happy because Hanukkah is December 18th. Last year Hanukkah was in November or maybe not last year, the year before. I don't know. I don't like when Hanukkah is in November because I feel like Hanukkah ends and then there's still like a whole nother month of a Christmas season and everything is like really Christmas focused and our holiday's already over. So 
um, Hanukkah being on December 18th, there's still going to be a little bit of overlap, one day of overlap, but at least it's like around the same time. So I think that with that, we are set. So we have the monthly is ready to go. That currently page back here that we just did is ready to go. And I have this ready. Oh, I forgot about this page. Okay. So, um, I'm just going to change these two headings from need and want oops, to cat for category and PMT for payment method. So let's say that I go to the grocery store, the category will be groceries or food and the payment method will typically be cash. Um, if I go to the chiropractor, the category will be medical, the payment method will usually be my credit card and then I'll move the money over. If I buy planning supplies, the category will be planning, the payment method will be um, my business debit card or PayPal or something like that. Also, I've had questions recently about the fact that I don't put planner supplies in my budget and what that is all about. So I do not quote budget for planner supplies. Um, my planner supply budget comes from you. It comes from the sales in my Etsy shop. Um, there's kind of a fund that I have there of money that I've earned on Etsy and that's where I pull from when choosing to buy planner supplies. So if you've purchased from my Etsy shop, thank you for your support. If you haven't, you can save on all orders using code YouTube. I have reading trackers, budgeting trackers, all fun stuff in there and a ton of listings and more to come soon. So I hope that you enjoyed hanging out with me during this video. Um, please do give it a thumbs up and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. There is going to be a ton of videos coming over the next couple of months of 2023 setup, budget planner setup, sinking funds, all the stuff that we love this time of year. So um, I hope everyone has a good day, a good night, a good morning, depending on when you're watching this, and I will see you next time.